Hello again. We're back with another Wednesday edition of. Uh, <laughs> I always forget what I call these things. I mean, they're just videos, they're just vlogs, Ross. Episodes. I don't know. What's a better name for it? I'm not sure. It's almost like a. Uh, I don't know. Has it become the thing for me to do? Maybe it's, it's my nervous energy coming through that I start these videos with like a, a self deprecating, you know somewhat humorous joke um, that's not really that funny at the start of each video, I don't know, but, you know, anyway, I'm all good, thanks for asking, the progress this week has been very nice, client session last night, sorry, discovery session last night, <clears throat> getting ahead of myself, the discovery session went well, really, really, really good to get one done. I suppose, for lack of a better phrase, uh, I'm in the hat in the background. Don't need, um, yeah, just really good to get one done. As expected, I felt like the first 10 minutes I was a bit slow. <clears throat> slow off the blocks or slow out of the blocks, whatever the phrase is. And I definitely took a little while to get going, but it was bright. So we'll see. I, it's one of those ones I always say, I don't know why I'm going to put myself on the spot now. My gut feeling is that that individual will benefit from working with someone like me. If it's someone else or if it's me, brilliant, you know, but if it's someone else, fantastic. I think they could just do a bit of support. Largely on the objectivity piece, because they've never really, you know, they've probably never really had someone helping them for a sustained period who's been outside the business. And I've touched on this before, but if you have someone doing that with you, who's just completely out of the day to day, <clears throat> doesn't really know you, your team, all that well, initially at least, they can just give you a very, they can give you quite a lot of clarity, to be honest. And yeah, I think in, in this case, I, I certainly would be able to do that amongst a few other things. So anyway, I'm not gonna say any more because I don't wanna cloud my own judgment on this. So I will be doing the rest of the analysis probably quite soon after this video and then the rest of it will be finished tomorrow. So <clears throat> yeah, uh, overall, very happy, you know. I, I Again, I really enjoy this stuff. Like I, I genuinely do love, and th there's an, I know myself from th having done quite a few of these in the past as well. There's enough from that session for that owner. If he didn't speak to me ever again, I would be happy enough in the sense that we got into enough detail and I was able to give him enough clarity that there are things that he can run with immediately. And I think that's brilliant. I mean, that to me is helpful, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's where we got to with, with things yesterday evening and today, did a bit of work on it, not too much. And today was actually a bit more in the pipeline side. I, I didn't suspect at the start of this week after the Monday, the way I started things on Monday that I'd do much more on the pipeline front, but alongside a few kind of small implementation tasks for client. They did quite a bit in the pipeline side, which is good. And yeah, I'm quite confident I'm gonna get a few more intro calls this week, which is good. It'd be nice to start the month with a few more booked in and just build on what was a really good month last month. So overall, that is the business update. And yeah, I mean, I suppose from my perspective beyond that, there's, not a tremendous amount. I'm looking up at the whiteboards or anything moving if not from there. No, look, I, if even, I know I had my, I still have it on the desk. Haven't got rid of it yet. The win the week sheet. I mean, the main, the main thing on this, there really should be one thing this week and it is just about these discovery sessions. So everything beyond that is a bit of a bonus or a plus. <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to go into part three of my story. Again, why am I doing this? Like, I asked myself that question after publishing the last video that was part two. It's like, I think it's an important, I don't really expect, maybe you're a loyal fan and you watch all of these and you really listen to the story. I just think, even if you listen to parts of it, it helps you just understand me in a little bit more, well, a little bit more depth, I suppose. And, this part of the story for me is particularly important because uh, we've got to the point now where I've started 
uh, we've started the, the the third job in London, which was like the big one or the one that took up the, I was there longest. And a lot of what I took from this in a professional sense, <clears throat> informed, I mean, this, this was, this is, this was the catalyst for me deciding to go freelance, which enabled me to work from anywhere, which meant that I ended up in Galway. And if you think about life through that lens, this is quite a big part of it, because if I hadn't taken a job like this, and I suppose things had played out differently, which I'll come back to, you never know. I probably wouldn't have been a, an agency, I probably wouldn't be doing these videos, at least in this context. So, next role, it's with a startup, based in London, content marketing role, great. Full-time position, for that point in time, fine salary. Didn't really matter to me what the salary was at that point. Moved back into the city of London, and you know, from a professional perspective, I'm just gonna summarize this as, similar to doing journalism, similar to doing journalism at university as a postgrad, by doing this job, I realized that doing content marketing in-house for one company is probably not something I wanted to do. And that's fine, you know. The, the company itself, uh, I think had its fair share of challenges. Now, this was like three in a row at this point. So I remember thinking at one point in time, am I just, you know, <laughs> am I cursed? Am I, am I bringing bad fortune upon, upon companies? All these companies have their fair share of challenges, but equally, that's also reality. This company was fine, they're doing really well now by the looks of it. And at the time they were hiring quite aggressively. And I think truthfully for a number of reasons, <clears throat> I, I always felt like it just wasn't probably two things. I was figuring out a lot for myself in terms of my own fit within a business and my impact. And I probably was listening to a few too many hustle heavy entrepreneur podcast telling me to work 22 hours a week or 22 hours a day and stuff like this um but i look i had a good i was there about two years again if i think about this in terms of layers this was such an important layer for the cv or the story because i learned a lot about again myself i learned a lot about marketing in general, worked with some really great people. Uh, I've worked with some fantastic people who were in our, our parts of the business, who even just by talking with them about business, I learned things on reflection that I probably didn't even acknowledge at the time. But in a nutshell, I think what I took from this was that operating a business now from zero to 25 people, I'd seen a lot of that. It's hard as hell but there are things you can definitely be doing to help yourself out. And if I look back at that period with each of those three roles, just observing how leaders led their businesses or how owners operated their companies really was some, quite an important thing for me to see. I mean, the specifics of it are quite simple. <clears throat> I left, like the job I was doing within that company was fine. I think for the most part overall, it was okay work. I definitely wasn't having a profound impact on the business. When I left, which is what I'll get to in a second, <coughs> I did so on, being really honest, I did so on the ground, I think I said this in my exit interview. I said, uh, I don't really think this role is one you need in this business. And I was being very honest. I genuinely didn't. And, you know, would I have been made redundant at some point if I said in that role? Probably. Because I just don't think it was the right type of role for the business. Um, but again, there's me holding my hands up and being quite transparent about things. So I thought it was better for me to move on. Ironically, to that point, I felt the stuff I was doing for that company, while it wasn't great for them, could absolutely be valuable for other businesses. And that is what I then did next. So I went out and I freelanced, did contract work. So I ultimately was doing co content marketing for SMEs. Now that's quite broad, but think back to, this is quite a few years ago. And this is back when, 
well, at least from my perspective, <laughs> I understood Google a lot more from an SEO standpoint. And I understood the importance of writing organic content on blogs and, and for businesses of a certain size, you can maybe afford paid. This was a very effective way to get traffic to your website if done well. So I started freelancing and, and pretty much built a business. It was called Brown Bear Marketing. I built it around the idea of helping businesses drive customers through organic content. And by all means, it went really well for, I think I did that for about a year and a half or two years. And that brought me up to, again, I'm not jump too far ahead, but that brought me up to moving a couple of times, but moving to Galway, where I eventually found Connor slash Sentis. So I'm not going into that one right now today, but if I could summarize, so that shift from full time to freelance, do my own thing. There's a lot to unpack there in terms of reflections about why I did that or, or what I learned from it. Probably one of the best decisions I made professionally at that point in time. It was very good for me to get out of London and had a you know fine few years there. I think on a personal level I, I, I struggled with being... London is a lonely place if you don't have a tremendous number of people around you there and I honestly didn't and that's the personal side to it. The professional side to it was that it can go both ways I think so it can be exceptionally good for you or it can be very challenging and again, I think I experienced both sides. But at that point in time when I decided to leave, I was kind of kind of banging my head against the wall. And in a nutshell, I, I've used that phrase a lot. I have to change that. <laughs> um, I just felt like it was a good, good chance, good opportunity to move on to something different. And why not do it on your own? And I just, I suppose this, the opportunity I spotted was doing something exceptionally well, which is a phrase I use quite a bit now, doing something exceptionally well for the right person can really help them and they'll be happy to pay you for it. And that was really what Brown Bear Marketing was based on. And sure enough, I was able to build up a bank of clients as a freelancer. I never really, my best, I always say it, I mean, the best two months I had as a freelancer were the last two months I did it before joining Centus. So it took me a year and a half to get it to that point, which is not uncommon or probably shocking to anyone. But it was a year or so of just, I think, doing a lot of selling, doing a lot of pitching, doing quite a lot of work. But it was very rewarding from what I took from it because it was actually dipping the toe in the water of running your own business, doing your own thing, doing the tax side of it, doing all the administrative boring stuff that, you know, stood me in, has stood me in good stead as of today when I'm doing it now properly as well. So where does that bring us to? So we've been in London, three separate jobs, varying roles, great experience working in a range of businesses, freelance, went really well to an extent, learned a lot from that. And now we're in glorious Galway. And I think from my perspective at this point in time, pre-meeting Connor, I built the freelance kind of consultancy business up to a point where I was like, okay, this is going really well. It's only gonna boom. And I remember sitting down in the coffee shop one day thinking, right, a couple of directions I can go with this. One could be hiring a team, or one could be keeping it lean, keeping it to myself, and maybe outsourcing some stuff. And that was, those were the kind of conversations I was having with myself just a matter of days before I met the founder of the agency that I then was with subsequently for, for five plus years. But there you go. So that's the next part of the story. If this is interesting, great. If it's not interesting, it's maybe a bit dry. Apologies, I should maybe make my uh, either my storytelling more uh, interesting or should have made my actual life more interesting. But it's, it's funny reflecting on this stuff. All these things have helped or have brought me towards this point where I'm having a conversation with a founder of an agency and I'm relatively well equipped to help him because of what I've experienced and done to that point. But there you go. You don't know it at the time. But reflecting back, that would be very much the case. So that's all for today. I will, yeah, be back tomorrow. Not sure what time tomorrow because we've got an hour late discovery session. 
Oh, sorry, that's Friday. Late discovery session Friday. Tomorrow will be all good. Probably around the same time again. And then, yeah, Friday will probably be a morning one. So that's all. See you tomorrow.